hello once again. Today we are going to go over how to create a start screen, a win screen, and a loss screen. I don't think I'll create all three of them, but I will show you how to set up at least a couple quickly. And then you can put in the third one if you like, a loss screen or a win screen. Basically knowing how to create a new level, create a widget interface, which is they, what they call it, an Unreal widget, how to create that, and how to have it show up on your screen when you hit play, how to push a button to go to the next level. It's pretty much all we need to know. It's not difficult. So let's get that to it right now. So first of all, let's open up my working one. So as you noticed, I just opened a level. This is an entirely new level, strictly for the start screen, and I'm calling it front end widget. You could call it start screen, load screen, whatever you want to call it. So when I hit play, this is what we see. And we have an interactive button here that says click to start. And I have this boring title up here showing what level this is. And when I click to start, I go into my level. All right, let's get to it. So we already created a start uh, start screen, front end. Let's now create a win situation, a win screen. So what we need to do is create a user interface widget blueprint. Actually, wait a minute, we got to create a brand new level. So we go to file, new level. I'm going to start with an empty level. We don't need anything in it. So file, new level, empty level. So now we are in that empty level. It says untitled up here. And our next step, let's save it actually. File save, and we will call this our win. We'll call it our win level instead of widget, so we don't get confused. Win level. And the next step. So when I hit play, there's nothing. It's black. There's no interactivity. There. Um. What we need to do is, for one thing, I want to, now that we're currently in this level, I want to set my game mode over here. It says none. And where we're finding this is the world settings. You can find that under settings. World settings. So you go under world settings. Let's make sure this is set to game mode. Because sometimes it will automatically, if we're in first person, it will... Uh, for some reason spawn a gun and when you're if your uh, widgets not set up properly you will hear yourself shooting firing off gun mode this will prevent that so make sure your settings world settings which open right here or at least they do by default go to game mode and make sure it's set to game mode and that should be done for my front end as well let's double check that click on front end yes I'll save my level and yes, that one set as game mode. All right, back to my win level. Double click. All right, now to our widget interface. So I'm going to go to the front end folder which I created for myself, and I'm going to right click in the empty space, and I'm going to scroll down to user interface. And what I want is a widget blueprint. As we can see, there's our widget blueprint, and I'm going to call it Win Widget. Now I'm going to double click and open it up. Let's expand that and dock it. Alright, so when we navigate around this, there's two major things we got to pay attention to. Uh, over here's our actually the two 
main things we got to pay attention to is right now we're in designer mode. If you see up here, designer mode, and visually this is where we're going to set up our interface. If I go to graph mode, it's a lot like a blueprint. This is where we can have events and functions happen. So to start with, we are going to go in designer mode and we're going to set up our widget. So what I want to have happen is I'm just going to create a background image and I'm just going to make it a color. I'm not going to put a image in there. So we go over here to the left side where the palette is and we're going to grab an image object and make it cover the whole screen. I need to do now is just simply change the color and right over here we see under appearance color and opacity and I'm just gonna make it dark black super simple nice opaque background if you want to put an image on there later you certainly can all right so we have our background nice and dark Next thing I want to do is add some text. And obviously I head over here to the palette again and just drag and drop some text in. And I'm going to make my text box bigger. And it's really annoying when that happens. And over here in content, we can change our text. So let's just say win. There we go. And under the appearance, I'll change the font size, which starts at 24. Make it much, much larger. So when we go to our win screen, we know what just happened. All right. Is that centered? Kind of. Looks good. All right, we've got win text on screen. Next thing I want to do is create a replay button. And there's two parts to that. First, there's the button. Make that a little bigger. And then there's the text. Let's throw a text on top of it. And as you can see over here in the hierarchy, the text is now a child of the button, which is correct. So we want it to be a child. I'm going to change the background color. No, I'm just going to leave the background color of my button white. And I'll change my text color so we can see it. And we will make it... We'll make it... Orange. Ooh, that does not look orange. Why is that? There we go. Orange. Change my text to replay. Change the size of it. All right. So when we hit play over here, we still don't see anything. So what we still have to do is tell our level to take this widget and put it on screen, put it on our viewport. So that'll be our next step. So keep everything as is. And what I'm going to do is go back to the level itself, the win level. And in the level blueprint, so make sure you understand that. We went back to the level and went back to and opened up the level blueprint. So by default, the event begin play and event ticks uh, events are already here. So we want on begin play, basically when the level fires up, we want something to happen. And what we want to happen is we want to see the widget. So I want to create a widget. 
and it pops up nicely with the context sensitive checked. And don't be worried, it says construct none. That's okay, because we have to select our widget. And our widget, I believe, was called win something. Win widget. And now notice how the title of this node turn, changed to create win widget. So that's good. So we also need to get the player controller from this owning player node. So drag off that and say get player controller. There we go. Next thing we want to do is add this to our viewport. Add to viewport. Finds it with context sensitive checked. Make sure the return value connects to the target. Pause here a second so you guys can check out exactly what we created. So on begin play, when the level starts, we create a widget, we add it to the viewport, and we pick the widget right here, which when you select the drop down, it's gonna show all the widgets that possibly are in the game, your project right now. So easy to find. So the last thing I wanna do, actually we're gonna test this. Let's test it, hit play. All right. And as you notice, my cursor disappears there's no interactivity. It's okay. Escape that. So one thing we want to do is have our cursor remain on screen so we can push that button. So this is a simple little thing. We don't have to set anything up. We just have to type in set mouse and context sensitive not finding it. Uncheck. So right here when I look for a node, set show mouse cursor. This is going to keep our cursor on screen and let us push that button. Super simple. So now make sure you check the box. And we need to connect the target to the get player controller again. Take a pause here and you can look at that setup. Remember, we're in the level blueprint. And let's see what happens when we hit play. All right, my cursor stays on screen. Uh, my button's pushing. But nothing's happening. That's okay. Let's escape that. All right, we're going to go back to our widget. So find your widget, or if it's already open, go back to it. Or win widget. Actually, I see that that's not saved, so I'm going to do a save all right now. Make sure nothing catastrophically gets lost. So remember, back at my win widget, we're in the designer, what we call this, the designer tab, the designer view, or graph view. So remain in the graph, the designer view, and click on your button. You can click on it here, or you can click on it over here in the hierarchy. What we want to do is create an event now. So if we head over to the details with the button clicked, we want to create an event on clicked. Let's create that event by clicking on it. And it immediately jumps to the graph view. We were just in designer view. We created an event. Jumped us back to graph view. Or jumped us to graph view. Alright, so this event, when it gets clicked, we want something to happen. Super simple drag and search for a new node 
we want it to open a level. And right away it comes up, open level with context sensitive check. Now we need to find the name of our level we want to open, and that would be our main gameplay level. So I'm going to go back here, go up to my main folder, and I believe this is the latest level, yep. I'm going to copy that level, level's name, and go back to my win widget and simply paste it in the window. It says level name. Pause there and let you uh, catch up and take a look at that. All right, let's hit play and see what happens. Button works, my level is open. All right, there's the functionality. So how do we get to our windscreen? So we have the windscreen set up, but we need to understand how do I get my start screen to show up properly? And when you're jumping between the levels, for the start screen, the only way you're going to, if we're just in the editor here, and I'm comparing this to an executable build, right? If I have a standalone build and I fire it up, it should start on the front end widget. So if you're going to make a build, I already covered this in my executable, uh, how to make an executable build, but I'll cover it again. If you're going to create a build, you want it to start here, and then you push the button, and it goes to here and when we win we want it to go to here so I'll show you how to set it up for the win but the only way this is going to work in an executable if we want to simulate it now in the editor we have to just open this level first yes save so we open this level here we are we hit play click to start okay it works so to make sure in your project settings that if you do a build that's correctly happening and the level sequence is happening in order correctly go to project settings and it's going to open this tab right here is maps and modes so again settings project settings maps and modes make sure the game default map is set to your front end your start screen so when you do a build, this is what's going to come up first. This editor startup map is very useful for when you open Unreal and open the project, the first level it opens is what's set here. So if you're turning in an assignment or something like that, you want someone to, you're going to give them the whole project and you want them to see the right level, make sure you set this here or they're going to be scrambling around looking for which is the latest level, which can get confusing. All right, so let's make our win level work, or our win screen pop up. And what we do with that is let's go to our main gameplay level. That's where our gameplay is. And what's happening here, this looks like an older one. This might be an older level. So what we want to have happen here is, let's see, what will my win condition be? I believe if I collect these two keys, I go to this trigger volume, let's see what happens here. Key number one. Nothing happens. There's my win. There's my Yay! win sequence right there. Yay! Oh, I got an error. What does it say? It 
something about killing my static mesh unnecessarily. So let's see if there's any events connected to this trigger volume. Jump to event. Oh, there is. Play sound. Oh, it just plays the victory sound. Aha! So right now it's going, yay! Which you guys probably heard and I didn't. So I have my volume on. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to load a level here instead of just play a sound. So let's disconnect this. Actually, I'm going to delete it. And when I hit this trigger volume, I want it to open a level. And what level is that? It's our win level, which I'm going to copy the name of just to be, just to be perfect. Paste it in there. Alright, so if you don't want it to happen right away, give the player at least a second to realize what's going on. Got to put a little delay in there. Let's make it delay for 0.35 seconds. And what we want, where we want the yay to happen, because it sounds good, because you know you won. We want that to happen in the wind level itself. So, double click on the wind level. And yes, I want to save. Close that. My widget's all set. Yep. In my win level, in my level blueprint, what I want to have happen, not only do I want to create the widget when the level starts, but how about we play a sound when it starts? Play sound. And we'll play it in 2D so you hear it the same everywhere. And that sound is my yay sound. Yay. And I don't need to tell it where to play because it's in 2D. It's going to play everywhere. So let's hit play. Hear our sound. Good, good, good. Yay! that the sequence is working properly. Oops. Plugged in my headphones because I can't hear yay. Go back to my level. And let's open up my gameplay level. Yes, we will save it. Play. Grab my two keys. Perfect. Very nice. All right, so I also Yay! Have some lost so I'm sure you can imagine. How can I create a loss? <clears throat> you do the exact same thing. Create a new level. File new. Empty level. Create a widget in that level. Put the background, put the button, put the text. Create an ev event on the button that will replay the level if you want to replay it. And you need something in this gameplay setup that would make you lose. So if I touch this enemy that spawned, I could lose, or I could just create a hazard. Like, uh, let's see what hazard could be around here. How about we just have a spike of some sort? Don't touch. Don't touch the cone, actually, I need a... Duplicate. We'll create a red death color. And if you need to know how to do materials real quick, jump, 
over to my Unreal Basics, like over materials really quick. So save, I just change that to red using RGB. So with this selected, I'm gonna create a cone. Why did it make it blue? What the? That is bizarre. Hmm. Interesting. Usually when you have your material selected, it will simply red cone. I'm going to throw a trigger volume really quick. So my red cone is nothing more than a visual representation of danger, danger. associated with that. Add an event on actor begin overlap. This now jumps me to my main level blueprint. And what I want to have happen here would be open level. And now at this point, instead of me putting my front end or my wind level, I would put my loss level. But for now, we're going to put wind level. Now you need to create a brand new level. It's the loss level. Instead of saying yay, it'll say like ouch or you lose. So that's in there. Hit play. Don't touch the red cone. So now when I click this, remember this says you lose. Same button could say replay. Yay! That's it. That's how you create start. Uh, some start starting interface, winning interface. Easiest way to do it, separate the levels. You certainly can keep it within the same level. It's just I don't see the point of doing it. I mean in a large, large, large project, maybe you need to do that. But as we're prototyping and building things and moving forward, not necessary now. All right, that should cover just about everything. And if you have any questions, just throw it in the comments, and hopefully I can answer them accordingly. Thank you for watching, and we will talk to you next time.